Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you may have guessed from the title of today's video, we're looking at a project that's on the larger scale. This is something that I've been working on and thinking about for a lot longer than since we've had a large format printer. We received our Elgo Jupiter uh, just last month, about mid-June, and we've been able to play around with it quite a lot. The question that I wanted to answer in a jewelry context is how can we use a machine with a build plate of this size to its fullest. So I've come up with three different experiments and got varying success across them and I've learned a lot. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of each and what I would recommend that you guys do if you're a jeweler trying to get into large format 3D printing. We'll start with the one that gave me the most trouble and frankly I was only able to get to this stage, but this is a much larger project. So I was utilizing a technique that we first looked at with the Asiga, part stacking. Now Asiga has part stacking as a native function of its slicer, but this is something that is very not in any other slicer because it's so industry specific. I constructed my own part stacking raft and Unfortunately, you can see I didn't get too far with it. it. It didn't turn out very well. I have a lot of trouble with build plate adhesion on this particular machine, and this is going to be a trend that kind of is a feature throughout this video, unfortunately. I was only able to print two layers, so we have a base and a second. I'm actually able to go up to seven layers utilizing the Jupiter. But as you can see, based off of this result here, um, I probably couldn't have gotten past three for you know just bed adhesion problems alone. The idea behind this is that you would populate this, for lack of a better word, a building. You're basically building a building. Populate it with rings. And I was able in software to populate it with 1260 pieces, which is a phenomenal number. I don't know how long exactly it would have taken to print. However, if we jump ahead just a little bit, this guy here, uh, experiment number two, took eight hours. So if we, were, if we were to multiply eight hours for one layer times seven, we're looking at about 52 hours of printing. Of course, this will depend on a lot of factors, most, mostly your resin and your settings. I was able to, like I said, fit about 1260 models in my seven layer stack, but I was never able to actually export it because my computer would just crash and as soon as it crashed, I think three times, I was just unable to open that file again. It, it was completely out. Now, I don't have the best possible computer. I just have a, a 2020 27 inch iMac. I have 32 gigs of RAM. I have a six core Intel in it. It's, it's nothing to brag about, but it's definitely not the worst. It's you know, not like an Acer laptop from, from 2000 or something. But I think what you need for doing part stacking at this size is a Linus grade Threadripper dual 3090 ridiculous. I don't even know what's available now. I'm not a tech guy. I'm not a tech channel, so I don't know. Um, you need something monstrous to be able to handle this. Just to render it is a task unto itself. To save it and have it print properly is a separate issue entirely. Moving on to the second method, which is probably the way that everybody uses a resin 3D printer anyway, is simply not worrying about the Z, just get one layer. Let's just get one layer to work. I had a very similar result to this guy on the back. However, the upside to this one, of course, is that I was able to actually print some models. And even with this failure along the back side, about a third of these are still perfectly fine. So unlike part stacking, where if you have an issue on the bottom and it cascades all the way up to the layers, you don't have that so much with this. On this particular bed, I was able to fit 100 rings, and I still have a lot of extra space. I could probably fit another 10 to 15, so maybe 110, 120 rings, depending on your designs. So overall, nothing too fancy about this, but one of the big challenges I ran into was, again, that layer adhesion problem. This is an issue that I've had with the Jupiter with literally every single print. I don't wanna to jump to the conclusion that the printer is the problem because most of the time it's user error. 
However, I have been doing this for a while. I have followed the instructions to the T. There's only so many times you can level the bed and adjust your print settings and you still consistently get these problems that it must be the machine's problem. But we're not gonna talk too much about that because, well, we're gonna review the machine in a little bit. Make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss that video. Uh, I'm very critical of this machine. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's a difficult one. Now going back to the software thing where this was just unrenderable, this one was problematic as well. Chidubox, Chidubox Pro, doesn't matter which one you have, does not handle large format. It, does, it doesn't handle large prints very well. I actually went so far as to set this up on Prusa Slicer. I created my own custom Jupyter build plate everything because I love Prusa Slicer. It works so much faster. It's just, I love it. It's just what I'm into. Don't judge. Then I would export that plate complete with supports and everything's already done. I brought it into Chudobox and I could have left it overnight to try to slice and it just stalls. It cannot handle a file of this size. I believe it was only one and a half gigs, which is still a pretty big file, but not outlandish. So I had to switch over to Leechy Slicer and bring over a whole bunch of resin profiles and Leechy handled it flawlessly. So if you're new to 3D printing and you're watching this, just start with Leechy Slicer, forget Shadoobox. Moving on to the third method, which is kind of a combination of the, of the two. It's this, printing your trees pre-assembled, ready to go. I didn't actually print this on the Jupiter because after dealing with these, I knew bed adhesion would be a problem. I wasn't gonna risk something this high, this tall. I believe if this took eight hours, this probably would have taken at least a full day I'm not prepared to handle that kind of failure. So I printed this on the Prusa SL1S, but I could have also printed it on the Mars or if, you know, any printer will really do for this. But it depends on your design. I was able to fit 38 models on this tree. I pre-assembled it in Shaper 3D and just exported it as it was. This is by far, I think my favorite method, not only because it printed well, but because it's saving me so much time. This is something that we need to think about when we're talking about either one of these other methods. If you're able to print 1,260 models, you have to take all that apart and sprue it. And that's a monumental task, frankly. Even 100 rings is a bit daunting, but definitely more manageable. With this, it's printed. I can cut off this little base, which is of course optional. You don't have to have that and you plug it into your rubber base, put your flask around it, and you're done. It seems pretty simple. You could have the whole process done in like 15 minutes, which is awesome, uh, compared to the, I don't even know how many hours, I hesitate to even think about it, to tear all of these apart. Another factor is of course waste. This applies not only to this one, but to the rest. This guy is virtually wasteless. You can, of course, support your models as needed, but you don't have to worry so much about these ones. This guy, if you were to print these in a castable material, all of this raft, literally everything I'm holding in my hand right now is garbage. It has to be torn apart and thrown away. Yes, you're making 1200 models, but you're also creating you know, a tremendous amount of waste. And at about $300 a bottle for the premium resins, for, or even at $100 a bottle for some of the, the cheaper ones, that's a lot of money that you're just throwing out. And I don't really approve of that, frankly. 3D printing is supposed to you know, help with the waste problem, not aid it. This one's kind of a mid-ground when it comes to the waste issue. I printed this raft because I wanted to have something to show and tell. But you don't have to have a raft. You could just try to print everything standing upright as is. So this one is probably the best mid-ground between the two. So let's summarize. Part stacking creates an incredible number of models, but it produces a lot of waste. You also have to have a Linus grade Threadripper 3090 monstrous RGB beast to even render it and create those models, which I don't believe is something that everyone has. There's certainly lots of gamers out there, but do they have the correct hardware? 
Um, I'm not sure if even a 3090 is the appropriate one, maybe a Quattro, but again, I'm not a tech channel, I don't know. This is definitely a challenge for anybody. Second, the Pro, it's simpler. It's exactly how you'd be using the machine anyway, so it's probably one of the best options. It doesn't require any special training. You literally just throw your model up. How many copies do you want? You arrange them, it prints, simple as that. It can also produce little to no waste. Your print time is relatively low because you're only printing the one layer. You're not using that Z axis as much as you could. But of the three, I still believe that printing your tree fully assembled is probably the better way to go. Not only are you saving on, you know, just overall resin, because you're having virtually a wasteless product, but you're also saving on valuable time. You could pretty much cut out an entire few hours of sprueing. And because you've designed it in software, everything is exactly the way it needs to be at the right angle. You can set it to fit the correct size. And if you don't have a large format printer, you can print it on an SL1S or a Mars 3 or a Saturn. If you do have a large format though, you could fit five of these on a bed. And the grand total, if you were to print this on this machine would be 190 models, fully ready to go. You just slot them into the rubber bases, you invest and you burn out. Very, very simple. You save so much time. The other factor to consider is how much this costs in general. If I was to do this in castable resin, the Jupiter can fit about $1,000 worth of resin in it at one time. And that's if we're using the premium stuff. If I were to use the cheaper, something like uh, Apply Lab Work, which is actually one of the best resins we've ever used in the budget category at about $100 a bottle, this is something I would recommend you start with. Don't jump into buying you know, an oil drum worth of Bluecast X1 with a large format machine because you're gonna have to tune it. You need to get all those settings and everything done first. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. I know I did along this entire process. It's not something that I'm going to be dropping. You'll probably see a lot more of this in the near future as I start to pre-assemble trees for our project videos and things like that. If this is something that you yourself want to get into and you need some guidance about how to do this, uh, hit us up in the comments and consider joining our membership program where you have access to me on a more one-on-one -on -one basis through our Discord. And uh, you can kind of bounce ideas off of the community if there's someone working on jewelry specifics or maybe you're working on miniatures and you want to you know, print all of these in place. That's definitely something that we can talk about. So that's it for me. I will see you guys in the next video.